Hello. I'm going to be making a pattern up today. This one here. It is Simplicity 8910. Now, this is not a new pattern to me. I have made this pattern over and over and over. And it is one of my favorite go-to hanging out around the farm, getting stuff done, being presentable for public, and yet still way comfy dresses. And um, you've, I've worn them while I've been making videos and things. I know you've seen them. But I'm going to make another one. And what I'm going to be making it out of is this. What this is, and I've used the same type of fabric for all of them. It's 100% con, and usually I find it um, with the uh, home deck fabrics. Now, make sure if you're looking for that type that you get the one that's 100% cotton and it feels like a canvas, a really light canvas. Because in with all of that stuff, there's also 100% polyester ones, which feel terrible and they're basically plastic. But these make a fabulous dress because um, it's all cotton, but it's thick enough that you don't see anything through it. It's it's heavy enough that it's not going to blow away. Absorb it. You know, it's great. So, usually, I make this version where it's a shorter dress, but my legs are shorter, so it actually comes a little longer on me. And the sleeves that come like this. And there's a lot of pieces to this. Lots of pleats. There's like 10 darts, 10 pleats, but the finished product is so comfy it's worth it. So anyway, with that being said, I just wanted to share it with you because one, I need to make a new one because I found the fabric for it. And two, it's a fabulous pattern. So here we go. Okay, so like every woven fabric, the very first thing you do is pre-wash and dry it, especially 100% cottons. And so I have done that and I have ripped my edge and iron that edge so I can make sure that my straight of grain is on track. I also wanted to point out the length that I'm cutting is about six inches lower than the cutting line for view C. It's kind of like my own happy medium that I just came up with the first time I made it that was a good length for me. So it's not on a particular cutting line that's printed on the pattern, it's my own. And I also want to point out on this dress in particular, I actually cut out one size larger than I usually do. So usually like this blouse I'm wearing was a 16, that's my go-to. But for this one, I cut an 18 for a couple reasons. One, because I always make it out of 100% cotton that even if you do pre-wash it, chances are it might shrink up just a hair more in the future. And also it is a, a doing stuff dress. It's a meant to be worn and moved. And I wanted to make sure I could move very freely in it because um, the top is somewhat fitted. The bottom is very loose. All right, <coughs> ready to get started with this pattern. The first thing we're going to do is deal with piece number one. Now, just a warning, there is an incredible amount of marking and darts and pleats and facings in this dress. But I really love the finished product, so I don't mind it. What I'm doing is I am, I have my holes part punched out already with my little tool on the pattern, and I'm marking them with my pen that disappears. There's um, a lot of circles here. So making my little notches, I clip almost to the top of the triangle, but not quite. Okay, the center, I mean the uh, bodiced front darts come next. And I can see my marks through, so that's good. So I put my pin down in one dot, back up in the next dot and I pinch it where my top center dot is. Put a pin up here. Put a pin across here. And then I mark it just 
just in case something slips, you know. So from this top dart here, down, down. That's how I do it. And then when you stitch it, you stitch from the bottom up. I'm going to try to get a better shot of how I turn corners on my serger. Got my camera right in front of where I'm working here, so we'll see how well this works. All right, so what I do is come up to the corner. Actually, this isn't a 90 degree corner, so this is a bad one to show on. But I get up to where it's supposed to end, pull my needle up, lift my presser foot, turn it. This is actually a 45 degree angle and now another 45 and turn it and by doing it this way instead of just running straight off the rails um, you don't have a lot of tails your corners are really nice it saves a lot of thread and it's just it's just a nice a nice method of um, surging so what I did is I sewed my darts I pressed them both towards the center and now after I have that done, I am surging around this front bodice piece. Okay, then we're going to clip down to this center front inside the stay stitch line so that that can open up nice and flat. And get out the bodice back piece. Where are you, bodice back piece? Here you are. Okay. So again, transfer all the markings, the circles, the notches, and then we're going to do a stay stitch from the shoulders to the center um, across the back piece. Okay, so I have my back piece stay stitched, and I have surged around the edge everything except for the neckline where the stay stitching is. So I started on the top of the shoulder, worked my way all the way around to the next shoulder. Now I'm going to go ahead and match up the shoulder seams. I'm going to stitch those and press them open. Okay, so the next piece that we're going to get is our big long neck binding piece. You should only have one. It's a very long one. And go ahead and mark the dots. The two in the front. The one at the shoulder seam. And what we're going to do is sew the two sides together and then press the edge under it says 3 8 of an inch okay so with this sewn on the first thing that I'm gonna do is come back in here and trim down the seam allowance on the inside to about a quarter inch all the way around um, this band is not very wide and that's gonna make it a whole lot easier to fold it under and uh, make the pivot point in the front that they want. Okay, so that's trimmed down, which makes it a lot easier. So we have our fold pressed, and we're gonna match that up to the seam that we just sewed. So on either side, you're gonna see about a quarter inch of binding. Go ahead and pin that and stitch it all the way around. You're gonna do a top stitch really close to the edge of the front here just to make sure that you catch everything. I just want to show you, I gave up on the pins because it got very bulky around here and I just used my clips. And um, don't worry, once I get this sewn, I am going to come back and pull out these stay stitches that are exposed because they're driving me nuts. But clips definitely make life easier. All right, I want to show you a couple things. So here's the neckline. And this one is put on according to the directions with this little band. This is the starting width of the band. So by the time you take this fold in, and this fold in, and this fold over, you've got a pretty narrow band, okay? And um, it can be a little bit tricky, well, very tricky, honestly, to make sure that you're top stitching it at the same amount on the good side as the bad side. Oh, in the directions, it'll show you that you need to sew a little diagonal. That is after you put this whole band on. You go to the inside, fold it in half, 
and you're going to sew this diagonal that's kind of in line with the same uh, edge here and that just gives the the front neck a nice pointiness to it okay so here is my sleeve and the version of the sleeve that I'm working on is this one it's the longer one and the darts that we're doing are the darts down here at the bottom near the cuff there's another sleeve version here that's the shorter one that has a whole bunch of pleats up on top I'm not doing that one this is the one I'm working on so all of these darts that we're doing right now are down here to give the uh, the sleeve a nice rounded bell shape at the end which I really like so what I'm going to be doing is um, up at the top there's some dots that you're going to be e-stitching between I put a pin in the top dot and both of the side dots for each dart in one and out the other pull it together pull up this pin in my side so it's all lining up lovely and once it's there I can tuck that pin tuck this pin and draw a line so I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning up um, these five darts across here stitch them do both sleeves and then we'll press them so I'm starting it down here at the edge of the fabric take a couple back it up continue the rest of the way up back it up and go forward I do lock in the tips of my darts I'm very careful to stay in the same the same path that I took when I back up so I don't add any extra bulk okay so I haven't surged it yet I'm going to be pressing these darts and the two on the outside point towards the middle so I'm going to press these two so they point towards the middle I think that didn't look right does it I must not have it folded here okay this outside points towards the middle this one points towards the middle now the one that is in the very middle uh, it kind of depends on which side we're doing but on this one that I'm doing right now you can kind of tell but if you place it over one side or the other it's not going to lay as flat just choose the side that it lays the most flat on and press that down so you can see all my marks just disappeared and I have a nice flat dart so I can surge that on this side see if I can back this up and if you can see it makes a nice little shape so say your arm is bending and your elbow would normally be over here all of those darts is going to give you a nice shaped sleeve so it's never going to bind up on you alrighty so got the surging done around the sleeves now before we sew the side seams I'm going to put my um, base easing gathering type stitches in and I'm going to do it my way of course which I've shown before but it works for me if I put the machine stitching stitch at around a three number three I think that stands for three millimeters push this finger down and back up against the presser foot real hard and just start sewing with your edge of your foot along the edge of the fabric now this only works when there's not a tremendous amount to be brought in if you're actually really gathering a sleeve head to have nice full gathers or something this isn't going to work this only works when um, you're just trying to get a sleeve to set in and it'll be a nice smooth top so. so I go from dot to dot so what I have then is you can see the little ridges that are built in here it's just enough that the sleeve head will want to curve in so that I can set it in nicely 
There is a storm coming in. I just wanted to show you what it looks like underneath my desk. I have little dogs all over the place. Biddy! Hi, puppy. You see her in the corner. So this is where they hide. Hi, girl. Okay, so I think you can see I've got my sleeves um, sewn together and the seam allowances are pressed open but before we can set these in we need to put the bands on the bottom of the sleeves so they're strips again just like the neckline um, what I'm going to do is fold them in half right sides together and stitch across the end now the directions call for you to turn under one side and press it okay I'm not going to do that right now and I'll show you why in a minute but for right now I'm going to go ahead and sew these press the seam allowances open and I'll be right back okay so I'm putting my sleeve right side out this is my underarm seam here and I'm going to match up the seam on my little strip here my little band to that now the reason I didn't want to fold it in is that kind of locks you to a certain diameter and I plan on stitching this a little bit differently. I like to do it once the way that the directions say and then make my improvisation from there. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it, you know, matching my edges all the way around. But when I sew this seam, I'm going to sew it um, probably close between 3 8 and a quarter inch. I'm not going to do the full 3 8 I'm going to do just a really nice close little seam here because this band is not that wide and I don't see the point in trimming it if I can be pretty careful to uh, keep my end here, my, both of my edges together. So here I have it pinned on, nothing's folded here, and I'm going to go ahead and make that stitch. Okay, so I've got it sewn on here. It's basically a fat quarter inch is my seam allowance. So when I fold this up, I'm going to actually turn my sleeve inside out. I am a lot freer to be able to um, place my my folded edge uh, without without pre-folding it with with folding it now. And I'm doing that because around the neckline, because I had pressed it ahead of time, it was very difficult for me to line it up. And you know me by now, I like to line it up so that I can see my stitching line and not and just barely be underneath it. Okay, so this way, it's a lot easier for me to just kind of turn it and put a clip on there as I go so that I can have that edge right there. So. That's, that's how I'm going to do it, um, not press this little, skip this step here on step 16 where they have you fold it and press it. I'm skipping that. So I'm going to go ahead, pin these around, come back and stitch it on by machine. Okay, I just wanted to show you the finished um, band and doing it that way where you turn it at the last minute, that works so much better and you're able to get so much more of an accurate band and just the stitching can line up so much better so that's my hint for doing these bands okay I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night because there's a lot of thunder outside and my doggies are very nervous and just need a little one-on-one -on -one time on the sofa I think so I will see you tomorrow morning the storm is over it's a nice day and I liked the way that this binding worked, doing it my way on the cuff, so much better than the way I had it on the neckline, that I just pulled out that seam this morning and I'm going to refold and top stitch this neckline the same way I did here, which is basically instead of pre-pressing it and being stuck with that one edge, to just fold it and tuck it under to the right dimension that I want as I go so that I can then come back and top stitch it. and I think I'm going to get a much more uniform cleaner result than the other way 
I probably didn't need to do this. It's one of those things that I'm probably the only one that would notice it. But because it's front and center and right on the neckline, I'd be staring at it every single time I wore this dress. So I'm going to fix this. Oh, and another thing. And one other thing is I did stay stitch this like the instructions called for instead of using the stay tape that I usually do. And at this point, if I had to do over again, I would use the stay tape just because the thing is that this seam is very, very narrow. Okay. Sewing it, honestly, you should be sewing it at a quarter inch. To stay stitch a quarter inch, and they're calling for three eighths. I think that was what threw me off is you can't stay stitch at three eighths and then stitch at a quarter inch. It's just not going to work. But there's no way you can do that have the stay stitching not show in your finished seam. So stay tape would have been easier. This worked. It's fine. But that's just my opinion. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this redone, refolded and redone here, and um, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the neckline, we're going to go ahead and sew the side seams, just matching these up and sewing them. Um, you can see this part is cut at an angle, so it's pretty easy to match where that's supposed to go. So I have my side seams sewn and pressed open, and I'm going to go ahead and start pinning in my sleeve, matching my notches up to the dot. Now at the dot, if you have more ease than you should here, we can work that in at the machine, and I'll show you that there. Okay, I'm going to try to show you the view that I see. This camera's kind of in my way, but we can, we can work it. So I start at the underarm, do a little back and forth action, and then I start working around. Okay, so I've got the top pin still in here, and I'm trying to make sure that this edge stays in alignment, and I'm going to pull the top towards me. So it's actually sewing much slower than you normally would because I'm letting the feed dogs tug it in. So see, I have this extra fullness here. That's what's going to be moved in. So I'm at the very top right now. I'm pooching that out just so I can see it easier. Level it out. Okay. And past the circle. So we can go ahead and just go normal now. Okay. So now I'm back where I started. I'm actually going to back up to where my notch is. Put it down and I'm going to run another seam about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe even less, just inside my first one, just to have an extra, extra layer. And again, I just go from notch to notch doing that. Okay, so I can pull this out, clip off all my little threads here. So on the right side, Here's my dot, and that'll disappear when I iron it. But you can see the sleeve cap, okay, the sleeve cap is set in, all right? It's just, it 
it's just eased in up here so we don't have to worry about doing any extra pulling or gathering or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this and put a couple, I'm going to make a couple little clips here, not, not too far in. I don't like putting my clips too far in, but to like about a quarter inch of my stitching line. And that's just so that it moves a lot easier down here by my underarm. Okay, so we're going to get started on the skirt piece now. Now the first thing we're going to do is all of these pleats. Um, because I'm using a woven fabric that's nice and secure and I don't have to worry about it getting crazy like a stretch knit or something really slippery, I'm just going to go ahead and mark straight on my fabric with my little pen at the bottom and the top of each pleat. Okay, so I've got it all marked and um, you're going to want to mark it on the right side because you're going to be working your pleats from the right side. So the first two center pleats come straight into the middle and I am pinning them. You see there's a, a bottom dot down here too. I'm going to pin it all the way to that bottom dot because that's how I'm going to be pressing it. Um, so all the way across. I'll have two pins on each pleat. So these center ones come to the middle and match at center front. And then we'll just continue with the pleats on each side coming towards the center front from whichever side they're on. And you can see from the uh, pattern the directions. So this pleat comes this way. You just follow the arrows. So these I pinch it at the top mark and at the dot and bring it over and match them to their neighbors mark and dot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this all the way down on both sides. Okay, so I've got it pinned here all the way across. Now what I'm going to go do is press it like the top four or five inches, I'm going to press it the way it's pinned. And then I'm going to come back and base this at about half an inch. All right, so this is done after I basted this down. I came back with my serger and went all the way around. I like to do that after I do pleats and darts. That way it's just a single thickness and I, I don't have extra bulk of surged fabric that's folded. It just makes it easier to work with. So we're about ready to start on the pockets. So I think I told you I've made this dress um, before and I kind of did a lot of things my own way and I'm trying to stick to the pattern this time. But one thing that I did before is there's two pieces to this pocket, okay? There's this one and this one. And to this day, I still don't know why, but this pocket piece did not fit this pocket. It was much uh, bigger down here. So it was going to cause you to go in and ease in a bunch of pocket fullness, which I did not see the point to. Um, if anything, adding poochy pocket, I don't know. This is, this is a lovely size pocket. I like it. It's fine. So what I did at that point is I cut my pocket piece to fit the same size as this one. So when you're doing it, if your pocket piece on the bottom is a little bit bigger, you can go through the step of easing it in when you're sewing these two pieces together. I... It was one of those frustration moments and I didn't see their point in it, so I just trimmed it. So if you want to trim yours, I can guarantee it's going to be just fine. You'll survive, the dress will survive, and there are no ill effects of trimming this piece to match up to this piece. Because after I did that, I've made I've made it and it's, it's fine. So anyway, we're going to take your skirt front and put it wrong side down and take the pocket pieces and we're going to put those right side up 
it sounds wrong, but because we're putting a binding at this at this edge of the pocket and not folding it over, it works. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, pin these on here. Whoops. So I have this strip sewed on. What I'm going to do is flip it so that I am looking at it from the inside of the skirt. Now I sewed it somewhere between a quarter and three-eighths. So I'm going to come back, trim away some so I'm a pretty even quarter inch. Okay. That's going to take some of the bulk out of there too. So now I can go ahead and fold it over, tuck in my little bottom piece, and pin it so that I am just inside that stitching line. And that way I can come back from the right side, top stitching it from the right side, knowing that I'm going to be catching uh, this fabric on the back side. On, so if I'm looking at it here. This is the wrong side and I have it it's folded so I can see my little stitching. If I come on this side and I top stitch it just inside here, I know that I'm going to catch this. And that way I can also guide it and see what the stitching line looks like on the right side. All right, so with that band part done, I'm getting my bottom pocket piece here. And I've marked the two dots. I'm going to be placing these here. And the one dot should match up with this point. The other dot should match up with this point. Now when you sew it, you just sew the pocket loose. You don't sew it to the dress. You just sew it loose. So just to clarify, where I'm sewing is this edge down here and straight over. At this point I am not sewing this part, okay, just to here because this, I first I want loose so I can serge it, but also this is going to be pushed down and sewed when we sew the side seams, so it's going to be caught at that point, so I can just leave it free right now. So I've got this sewn and I've surged just around that same edge that I've sewn. And now I've gone ahead and folded and pinned the edges in so I can come back and surge across the top and down here. And my surging is going to catch all of these other layers. This side I've already done. So you can see it's going to catch all of those layers and make them work as a single piece. If you don't have a serger, um, I would run this with a zigzag just to um, secure it. Okay, so with that done, we're on to our last piece, which is the skirt back. And there's a lot of pleats in the skirt back. So just like the front, open up and mark all of your pleats on the right side of your fabric. And go ahead and pin, press, baste the very top edge, just like we did with the uh, pleats on the skirt front. And then after it's been basted up here, then go ahead and serge the outside edge of your uh, skirt back piece. Okay, so here's my skirt back and I didn't show a lot of detail because you basically do the same thing that you did to the front where you make the pleats, press it, stitch it, and then serge off the finishes on the edge. Now what I'm going to be doing is sewing the skirt back to the skirt front. Just straight down the sides, pretty darn easy. Just pin it, stitch that, and press the side seams open. So I have my side seams sewed. Here's my front, here's my back. And I want to show you, they call for pressing the seam allowances open. Instead, I press them both towards the back. 
And the reason I did that is because up here where this band is, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. You have a whole bunch of layers of fabric right here. And pressing that forward with that many layers, it's gonna, it's not gonna want that to lay very flat. Um, I just think that it will be a smoother edge if it's pressed towards the back than if this piece is pressed back towards the front. So that's what I did. Anyway, moving on, at this point we're ready to attach the skirt to the bodice. So just going to go ahead and pin it in, kind of like you're setting in a sleeve, matching the fronts, backs, side seams, and then just working it all in from there. Now there's a dot that you should have put in your very center front, and that's going to match up with the center front on your skirt. Pull some pins down. And then... Floofing it out, your side seam on your skirt should be matching with the side seam on the bodice. And on the bodice, I have my seam allowances pressed open. It's only on the skirt where they're pressed to the back. You know the drill. You know how to do this. Um, I will be right back after I have it all pinned and stitched around. And um, after you have it stitched, you're going to press it so the seam allowance is up towards the bodice. So now the dress is basically done except the hem. So I'd suggest try it on, hold it up to yourself, and get an idea of where you want the hem to be. Um, hang on a second. I usually make these a little bit shorter, but this one, I held it up and it's like, you know what, I think I want that one longer. Oh my gosh, my camera is so crooked. Okay, so I'm going to make this actually a little bit longer than I typically do. I'm going to put a one inch hem on it, but because I like to, it's definitely not necessary, but I am going to be putting um, seam tape, seam flexi lace seam binding lace on my hem. And the way that I do this, and it's just for fun, honestly, this is just for fun, but I enjoy it, is you take the lace, and it's, it's actually a really cool little thing. See if I can do it. So you can see there's like these little channels on each side. Those are the rows that you sew in, okay? So putting it back down here. What I'm gonna do, is you start the lace with the fabric down the middle of the lace, but you actually sew it down this channel, and I sew it with a straight stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around, and I'll be right back. So I have my lace sewn onto the bottom edge, and what I'm gonna do, because I have about a quarter inch poking up from the bottom here, so I'm it's going to make my one inch hem more like a, well, we're going to call it one and a half. Okay. So when I actually am pressing it, I'm going to press it so that from the bottom edge to the top of my lace here is an inch and a half. And then once I have that all pressed, then I come back. And again, I'm just going to use my machine and I'm going to do a straight stitch. And I think that will be fine on this fabric and on this, this dress. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch down this top rail. And then we'll be done. I hope you liked it. I really like this dress. It wears very 
comfortably. And especially using a fabric similar to this one, which is the heavier weight, 100% cotton. It's like a very light canvas is what it is. And like I said, I usually get it over in the home deck area. Um, just wash it first, wash it and dry it first. I um, would change a couple things. I would change the way that the band is put on. Stop it, cat. I would do the technique where you don't turn and press under the end of the band until after it is stitched on because that way I think that you can get a much more consistent um, band width and a consistent placement of the stitching line. And the other thing is that pocket that I trimmed on mine. The under pocket, it, it just didn't seem like it was sized the same as the upper pocket and I couldn't figure out why they would do that. So I just trimmed my under pocket to match and it works just fine. These pockets are plenty big. You can throw your phone and your keys and whatever else you have in your hands in there. And um, they're a great size, really comfy. This is actually a fabulous traveling dress, a fabulous get on an airplane dress or a long road trip dress too. Um, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on this style, just out of the blue in airports and things. So there's that going for it. So I hope you liked it too. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye-bye.